Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X.E.L.O. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for coming back. But if you are new here, definitely like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. That'll let y'all know when I drop another video. And today I'm going to be actually talking about auto-tune, or should I say pitch correction, when you're actually recording. I know a lot of people have issues actually recording auto-tune straight uh, instead of just after. So a lot of people actually want to record the auto-tune so they can hear themselves before it actually is processed. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You ready? All right, no problem. Let's go. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk. Um, I have a beat already loaded in here, the trap beat that I made. Um, if you watch my videos, you'll actually be able to notice this beat. I'm just gonna play it real quick. All right, enough of that. All right, so um, if you actually wanna uh, check out how I made this beat, you can actually check in the link. It's probably on my face right now. Uh, why would you do that to yourself? But yeah, anyway, um, let's get into it. So basically we have the beat set up, so we need to set up the audio. So there's like several ways to actually add an audio track. You can go here to the plus sign and add a track and add an audio track and hit create. You can right click in here and insert an in audio track, or you can go down here inside of the console view and actually insert audio track. But I'm gonna add one right here and I'm gonna actually go to where it has none here. You can actually do this on this channel as well up here. If you stretch this out, come down. It has an option that says none. And if you drop down, it'll give you an option that do different things. So I'm gonna do it down here though, in the console view. So I'm actually going to set it for um, FL Studio ASO. I'm going to use the left side of it because I know that's where the my um, first input is on the left side and my second input is on the right. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get rid of the latency. Um, that'll actually cause a lot of issues if you're actually trying to record. Um, if you're using an audio interface, um, it's good to use audio interfaces um, ISO driver If you just have ISO driver you can try that as well. I actually have FLs so it'll actually link with my OBS and inside of my cakewalk so it's gonna be um, Pretty bad or sucky I should say so if you go into preferences um, inside of preferences you want to actually go to where it has your a ASIO panel um, you should be able to change it and lower it down to as low as you can possibly do it without it actually breaking up and clipping and making a whole bunch of popping noises. Uh, that would be the setting I would suggest for you to do the auto-tune while you're actually recording. Make sure you kind of limit your track. So if you've done a beat, I advise you to actually just um, put the beat into like a stereo track, put it back into another mix or whatever, and then record if you're going to be using auto-tune. Um, this is 256 is the lowest that FL actually goes. Uh, so that's why I'm using that. Now what I want to do is actually go down here to this master and click on the output and I'm actually going to create a new stereo bus. Alright, so the reason that we are creating a new stereo bus is so if you have other tracks that you want to actually record auto-tune on, you don't have to add it to every single, you know, effects in every single new track that you create or audio track that you create. You can just have it in one and just basically bust all of them to that one auto-tune. All right, so let's uh, set this up now. So I'm going to go on, on this bus B. I'm just going to name it because I had a bad habit, but no, should I say a good habit? So I'm actually going to show you guys um, Graylion 2. Graylion 2 is a free um, pitch correction plugin uh, that you can get. I'll probably have the link somewhere in the description. Uh, so you can actually check it out if you want to. They also have like a, a full version where you can actually get this like pitch tracking mode and um, 
this bit crusher to do bit crushing on it. So let's kind of go through it. So this pitch shift will actually give the voice to go up and down. And um, so basically, if you want to sound like more of a chickmunk, we turn it to the right and we'll go to the left if you're trying to do a more of a deeper voice or like a demon voice or whatever uh, of that sort. Um, this is your mix for it. So you want to actually just kind of turn that up anyway. I usually like to leave it at the zero uh, point. Uh, this is your dry and wet knob. This is your correction amount. So this will actually tell Grayley on how much you want to correct um, in the in the actual auto tune. So I'm just gonna put it. I'm gonna put it on. Uh, let's go 100%. So it'll do that weird uh, stuff in there. Um, all this other stuff you can kind of mess with it if you want to, but it's not. Uh, something I'm gonna really cover right now. So I know the um, the chord is like a D flat minor. So I'm gonna take off the keys that I know are not in the scale. So let's actually double check it. Let's go into, um, let's insert a MIDI track. Let's turn on this. I'm gonna go D and we're gonna go into the natural minor. And let us pull up the piano roll. All right. So you always need a little assistance every now and then. All right. So let's get back to it. So now that we know that we have we're in the right scale, um, what we want to do is see why there is no sound. So the first thing is to hit on this record button, and you should be able to see. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Right on the record button, you should be able to see your uh, vocals actually coming out of that channel. So that is the first step. But as you can see, there is still nothing coming out. I'm going to do a shift D. So there's nothing coming into the Grayley to actually get it to do the auto tune. So what you want to do is hit on this little icon here that says input echo. And when you hit on that, it'll actually bring up your auto tune. I know it sounds off, and that's because my latency is really bad. But let's actually go up here to the Pro Channel. I'm going to add a reverb on here. Let's give it some feel. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. I just wanna fly away. I just wanna fly away. Yeah. Act like that boy got some pipes on him or something, huh? Pretty much now, we should be ready to record. Y'all want to hear how this comes out? All right, let's try it. Ooh. Uh. Show you around. So that was a quick uh, way to actually put the auto tune on there. Let me stop this. All right, so it'll actually drive me insane hearing myself like that uh, constantly. All right, so we can take off this record and let's hear back how uh, bad or off I was. <laughs> As 
you can see, uh, that would be the way to actually do it to where you can actually hear yourself actually recording with the auto tune. So that way, uh, the artist can actually get a better chance of hearing how they will actually sound when the auto tune is actually applied. Um, of course, there will be more tweaking and more of the button turning in order to get it to where you actually want it to be. And you can actually use another auto tune if you wanted to. But this one is a free one, so I just wanted to show you guys quickly because I know a lot of people have been asking to do like kind of recording uh, stuff to show you guys how to actually use um, the audio inside of Cakewalk by Bandlab. If you like this video, if you found anything useful or anything informative, definitely uh, hit the thumbs up or the like notification. Or you can uh, just hit that uh, subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. That'll let y'all know when I drop another video. And once again, it's your boy X.E.L.O. Until the next time. Peace. Shorty on a ride with me. Shorty.